Okay, today we are talking about factoring polynomials, which is a very important process in your algebra study. Um, so first off, just remember that what we are doing today, whenever you're doing it, think about the fact that we are reversing the process of multiplying. That's what we've been doing the last couple of days, multiplying polynomials, especially, um, and binomials. So this video may be long, but I want you to break it up each time. I'm going to refer to the IXL that, that goes along with it if you want extra practice, but also would encourage you after each group of um, problems that I work, I'm going to tell you to stop and go do those problems that are in your classwork so that you can really practice what you've done and make sure that you're doing things correctly. So to start off with, the first thing that we're going to do is factor out the greatest common factor. And one of the reasons that that is so important is that every time um, when we get into the next day, that's kind of the first thing you want to do every time you look to factoring. So you need to be able to uh, be familiar with that process. So factoring out what we refer to as our GCF, you're looking at the all of the terms, remember a term is separated by plus or minus. So I have two terms here, and I'm looking for the numbers that they have in common. 16 and 24 have a common factor of 8, what the largest number that goes into both. And then you look and see if there's a common variable. And they do not both have a variable, so 8 is my common factor. And 8 times what is 16, or 16 divided by 8 is 2. I still have an x, and 24 divided by 8 is 3. So factoring out my GCF gives me this answer. Um, keep in mind when you factor out a GCF, however many terms you have to start with, that's how many terms you must have inside the parentheses. The number of terms will not change by factoring out a GCF. Okay, look at the next one. Look at the numbers first. The common factor for 4 and 8 is 4. They both have an x, and when they both have an x, you basically want the smaller exponent, or smallest exponent, if you have more than two terms. So this has an exponent of 1 that we don't have to write. That has a 2, so I'm taking out 1x. 4 goes into 4 one time, so I don't have to write the 1. But then I'm just going to subtract my exponent. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so that's x to the first. And 8 divided by 4, carry down my minus sign, is 2. And then x and x means I don't need another x because 1 minus 1 would be 0. The other thing is hopefully you can see that it is easy to check these. 4x times x is 4x squared. And 4x times 2 is 8x. And we carry that minus sign. Okay, here we have three terms. Again, looking at my numbers, 6, 18, and 12. The largest number that goes in is 6, and then each term has a variable of x. The smallest exponent is a 2, so that's what I'm going to take out. And then what am I going to have left? Well, I don't have a number, but if x to the 4th and I have x to the 2nd, that means I have 2 left. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1, so that's 3x to the 1st. We don't need to write that x squared and x squared is going to be the same. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So this is what our factored form looks like. Okay, this next one is really important because this is preparing you for a large part of what we're going to be doing. Okay, in this one, notice that this right here is the common factor. Okay, so in that problem, if I take out that common factor, 2x plus 1, then what do I have left? I have left, I have to put the parentheses, and what I have left is x plus 4. And that's all it is. Okay, again, when you see those parentheses, look and see if what's in the parentheses is the same. So I have 2x plus 5 and 2x plus 5 in the parentheses. So that is my GCF. So I'm going to pull that out. Again, 2x plus 5. And what's left is x squared plus 17. 
and that's going to be my GCF. Okay, so that is the first group. If you have any trouble or want more practice or need more practice with this, then go to IXL A1 and look at the topics AA.1 and AA.2, and that will give you more practice. Okay, so as I said, you can either go do some IXL or go actually should do your written work first. Try those, practice them since you've just seen them, and go do those problems on your classwork, the odd problems from 23 to 31 before you come back. Okay, picking up with our next group. Okay, this one we are factoring by grouping in here. So let me um, highlight that. This is what we're doing. When you have more than three terms, this is what you want to think to do. You want to factor by grouping. Okay, I'm not going to worry so much about the next thing because I'm going to tell you how to handle it. So when you're grouping, we're going to group two and two. So we we are showing how we're grouping, and within that group, what do those two have in common? Well, they both have an x, and the lowest exponent is 2, so they have an x squared. And when I take an x squared out of this, I'm left with x minus 3. Again, easy to check. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. You always want to carry down this sign so it's going to be plus, and then what do these two have in common? They have a 4 in common, and that leaves me with x minus 3. Now, these problems are designed to help you practice. These two, or what's inside the parentheses, has to be the same, or this does not work. So, when you're doing it, you know, you can easily check 4 times x is 4x, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, but Make sure these two are the same, or else you can't go any further. Now that they're the same, this is my common factor. So I take out my common factor of x minus 3, and I'm left with, parentheses, x squared plus 4. And there we have it. Okay, look at the next group. We have, again, we're grouping the first two, and we're grouping the last two. So of the first two, they have no numbers in common, but they have an x squared, because that's my lower exponent. I'm left with x plus 6. Now remember, you always take that sign. So this is going to be a minus, and what do they have in common is a 2. And keep in mind, like we talked about when we multiplied or distributed that negative, you will have to change the sign. So... Um, this term, you don't need to worry about it. You can just put down your x. But if this is a minus and you took out a negative, then this will be plus, And 12 divided by 2 is 6. Again, if you forget that, then that would say x plus 6, and this would say x minus 6. So that should be a clue to you. These aren't the same. Oh, yeah, I have to change the signs because I took out a negative. So, again, these must be the same for you to continue. So I'm taking out my GCF of x plus 6, and what's left is x squared minus 2. And there we have it. Okay, last one of this type. Uh, we have, again, four terms, so we're going to group the first two. We're going to group the last two. What do they have in common is x squared, and this tends to be challenging for people. Okay, because there's no numbers, all right? Now, we've done this x cubed before. That's fine. We have an x, okay? But remember, there are two terms here, so you have to have two terms inside your parentheses. So you bring down the minus sign, and x squared divided by x squared, or anything divided by itself, is 1. So that becomes x minus 1. You always carry down that sign. And what do these two have in common? But 5. And then when I take it out again, I remember to change the sign. And now, there's my common factor again of x minus 1. So I'm taking out x minus 1, and I'm left with x squared minus 5. Okay, so that is factor by grouping. 
if you need more practice or want to do some more of it after you've done the written problems um, in IXL, it is AA.6. Um, but what I want you to do now is pause and go do the factor by grouping problems that you have in your written work and then come back. Okay, so coming back, we have the next group, which are trinomials, okay? Uh, if it can't be factored, then you're going to put prime. Um, we'll talk about those. I will say, unfortunately, that none of my examples here are prime. Uh, and actually, none of the examples on your worksheet, uh, I don't think, are prime. But I'll check that out again. Anyway, um, this is a process, and it kind of carries forward what we just did with um, the factor by grouping. That's how I'm going to choose to do it, but so it's a similar process, and you're not learning uh, anything different. Okay. Um, as I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and write that in IXL, it's AA.3 and AA.4 for you to get extra practice. Okay, so the first thing you do, you have a trinomial. It's not four terms like we've done before. Okay, you do look for a GCF, but we don't have a GCF. So then what you're going to do is go identify A, B, and C. And if you hopefully remember that our general quadratic is AX squared plus BX plus C. So A is the coefficient of your x squared term. Well, what's the coefficient here? It's 1. B is the coefficient of your, uh, of your x term or your linear term. And C is your constant or the one that has no variable. So A equals 1, B equals 8, C equals 15. What is AC? Meaning multiply A times C and I get 15. And B is equal to 8. So now the hardest part of this problem is you've got to come up with two numbers that multiply to give you 15 and add to give you 8. So two numbers that multiply to give you 15. We have 5 and 3. 5 times 3, 5 plus 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 plus 3 is 8. So now that you've done that, these are the numbers that you're going to use to break this middle term up. So that gives me x squared plus 5x plus 3x plus 15. Okay, then you're going to do the step we just did before, and that is factor by grouping. So what do these two have in common is x, and I'm left with x plus 5. Always bring down that sign. What do these two have in common? They have a 3. What am I left with? x plus 5. These two are exactly the same. So there's my GCF. And I pull that out. That gives me x plus 5. And what I'm left with? x plus 3. And there we have our factor trinomial. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, A is 1, B is negative 14, and C is 45. So this is a little different. A times C is 45, but B is negative 14. So you're thinking of numbers that multiply together to give you 45 and add together to give you negative 14. In that case, um, if you can remember, what's going to happen is two negatives will multiply together to give you 45. So the two numbers that we have are negative 9 and negative 5. Because when I multiply those, I get positive 45. And when I add them, I get negative 14. So again, that's how I'm going to break this up. And that's going to give me x squared minus 9x minus... 5x plus 45. So again, I'm grouping the first two, I'm grouping the last two, taking out my common factor of x, and that leaves me with x minus 9. Always bring down that sign, and these two have a common 5, leaving me with x minus 9. You should hopefully see that 
these terms are going to be the same. So again, multiply back out if you're not sure. Minus 5 times x is minus 5x. Minus 5 and minus 9 is positive 45. So my common factor is x minus 9. So I bring that out. x minus 9, and I'm left with x minus 5. Now, I do lots of examples of these because there's always little things in there that can just make things different. And I want to make sure that you've seen every kind. So, let's go do this one. This time, A is not 1. A is equal to 3. B is negative 2. And C is negative 5. So, A times C is negative 15 and b is negative 2. So I'm looking at that and actually hopefully y'all can see that 3 and negative 5 3 and negative 5 uh, multiply together to give me negative 15 and add together to give me negative 2. Okay so again this is how I'm going to break up my 2x so I have 3x plus excuse me 3x squared plus 3x minus 5x minus 5. So when you find those two numbers, okay, those of course are going to be x because that's what your middle term is. And positive 3x and negative 5x give you negative 2x. So I'm grouping these two together. Um, another question that may come up is if you had negative 5 and positive 3 and you reversed them, you can see these two don't have anything in common. So the order that you put these in doesn't matter, but if you don't find a common factor, then switch the order so that you do have a common factor. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, please come see me and ask me a question. So these two have a common factor of 3x. I'm left with x plus, remember i got to have two terms here, so that's a 1. Always bring down the minus. These have a common factor of 5, and again, it's going to look like x plus 1. And I'm going to check that minus 5 minus minus 5x and minus 5. So that worked. Here is my common factor. x plus 1, 3x minus 5. Close it. Okay. Here's another one. We have an a value other than 1. Those tend to be the harder ones, so uh, there's a lot more possibilities that you got to keep in mind. So a is 9. B is 5 and C is negative 4. So we have A times C is negative 36 and B is 5. Well, again, fortunately, these two numbers actually give me 9 and negative 4 give me negative 36 and 9 plus negative 4 gives me 5. So those are my numbers. And I'm going to break that up. So that gives me 9x squared plus 9x minus 4x minus 4. Again, group in the first two, group in the last two. They have a common factor of 9x, leaving me with x plus 1. Always takes that sign. Common factor of 4 and x plus 1 because I had to change the sign when you factor out a negative. This is my common factor, x plus 1, 9x minus 4. Okay, moving along, two more, and then you're going to take a break and go practice some of these. Hopefully you'll have lots of examples to look at because they're different things with the signs and the numbers that you can come up with. Okay, so we have a equals 6, b equals negative 17, and c equals 12. a times c is 72. b is negative 17. So this time, 6 and 12 don't give me 17. So you got to think of the other factors of 72 that give you, or have a, if I have a minus sign, uh, if this is positive, then these two signs will be the same. And if that's negative, then they're both going to be negative. But basically, they're adding up to equal 17. So, again, that's the hardest part. List out your factors if you need to. 
I happen to know that they are 9 and 8. And as I said, they got to be negative. So negative 9 and negative 8. And there we have it. So we're going to break it up. We got 6x squared minus 9x minus 8x plus 12. And my common factor, I'm grouping the first two and the last two. Common factor is 3x, leaving me with 2x. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Uh, 9 divided by 3, and I already have an x. Always takes that sign. And these two have a common 4. And I'm going to go ahead and write that factor since I've been doing this, and then I check it. 4 times 2x is 8x, 4 and negative 3 is 12, because that's a negative 4. So we're good. There is your common factor. Take out 2x minus 3. And 3, I'm left with 3x minus 4. Now the other thing you can do when I'm doing these, pause it. You know, if you get it, go do some of them. And then if you get to one that you haven't seen, then you can pick it back up on the video. Okay, one last problem of this type. Uh, A is 20, B is 12, and C is 1. So A times C is 20, and B is 12. So I'm looking for, it's really funny looking at 12. Uh, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 20 and add up to give me 12. So pause. Hopefully you came up with 10 and 2. 10 and 2. If you need some help finding the factors of a number, um, I'll be glad to help you with that. So come see me if you do. So I'm going to break that up, and that gives me 20y squared plus 10y plus 2y plus 1. Group in the first two. Group in the last two. I have a common factor of 10y, leaving me with 2y plus 1. Oh, I like this one. There's a plus sign, so that's a plus. Now you look at those, they don't have anything in common. And they also happen to be the same thing as that one right there. So my suggestion would be to put a 1 out there and then go ahead and write them in parentheses because then you can see that this is your common factor. So when you take out that common factor, you will also remember that what's left is 10y plus 1. Because remember, we can't change the number of terms. Okay? So, there is factoring a trinomial. And we've done some where a is equal to 1 and some where a is not equal to 1. And we have our pluses and minuses that change all the way through. So, please pause and go practice some of those problems and then come see me if you have trouble with them. Okay, picking back up with the last two types of problems that we have. These are um, what more commonly are referred to as special cases, okay? Um, and they are special because if you used the shortcut when you uh, multiplied, then you get to use the shortcut when you factor. And there's not any work if you learn the pattern, okay? So this first one, the difference of two squares means it looks like a squared minus b squared. And that means it always factors to a plus b times a minus b. Okay? Um, the next one, a perfect squared trinomial, which I often refer to as a PST because it's shorter, are the ones that we talked about, and that is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And when you can recognize that, all you have to do is say, oh, that's a plus b quantity squared. So if you're using the shortcut and multiplying, then your life is going to be easier at this time. The other kind that we did is sometimes this second term is a minus, in which case when you factor it, it becomes a minus. But otherwise, they're exactly the same. Um, and the other thing to tell you for these two together um, the IXL that goes with them would be AA.5 for both of them. Okay? So, I'm going to go do those, and then we'll be done. So, two terms. 
Okay, if you, there's only two ways that you have to factor them, and that's with the GCF or a squared minus b squared. So they should be your best friend because they're the easiest ones to remember. But you look, first of all, that has to be a perfect square, that has to be a perfect square, and it has to be minus. And actually, just to remind you, we've done this before, but I'm going to remind you again what your perfect squares are. We have 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, 10 squared, 11 squared, 12 squared, 13 squared. 14 squared, 15 squared, and that should be enough to cover us. So I look at these two. That's a perfect square. That's a perfect square, and there's a minus. So that means it's a plus b, a minus b. I take the square root of that, and the square root of that, and one of them is plus, and one of them is minus. And that's all you have to do. Okay? Looking at this one. Perfect square, perfect square. So the square root of the first one, the square root of the second one, because you just take half your exponent, one is plus and one is minus. Uh, this one, a little trickier, but any even exponent is a perfect square. So this becomes x squared minus 1, x squared plus 1. So that is your difference of two squares. And keep in mind that when we multiply numbers, the order doesn't matter, so I can change this. But this is another one that is the difference of two squares. So this one can go further to x minus 1, x plus 1, and then x squared plus 1. So those are our difference of two squares. Again, it, like if you can remember the pattern, this is great because you don't have to think so much. It's not nearly as much work as the other ones that we just did. Okay, this last group are PSTs. And what you're doing here is you're recognizing that the first term is a perfect square and the last term is a perfect square. So if you do that, uh, I'm going to try x and then I have 2. It always takes this sign, okay? And then it's squared. And if you multiply these together, x times 2 times 2, you get that middle term. So you know that you've got your PST. Okay, perfect square. Perfect square. Always takes that sign. Uh, I didn't take the square root of that correctly. I didn't want to do that. I was looking for this thing. Y'all aren't here perfect square, i got to take the square root of it, okay? So the square root of that, so that without your exponent, the square root of 25 is 5. 5 times x times 2 is my middle term of 10x. So there's my perfect square. Again, perfect square, 5x. Perfect square, 1. Always a sign of the second term. And then that helps you to remember that the middle term is doubled. So it's always a good thing to check because it's easy to check. All right, the last one we have, the square root of 64 is 8x. Square root of 1 is 1. Always takes the sign of the second term, and that 2 means it's squared. So 8x times 1 times 2 is my middle term. And there we have all the types of factoring. Hope you will refer back to it as you need to. Um, remember, you can always check your factoring by multiplying it back out. Practice, practice, practice. This is very important. Come see me if you have any questions.